other World Wanderers and Great Eights. So in today's module, I'm going to be talking about the interactions and interdependence within the environment. So this module will focus on populations, communities and ecosystems, abiotic and non-living things in an ecosystem, biotic or living things in an ecosystem, different types of consumers, how energy is transferred along the food chains, how food chains can become interwoven to form food webs, the role of decomposers in an ecosystem, and also the various components of an ecosystem. So students, obviously every module has an aim. And with this module, module two, the aim is so that you are going to be able to define the term population and also the term community. You're going to have to be able to explain the meaning or the term ecosystem and also identify abiotic and biotic factors within an ecosystem. Then you have to be able to draw your own food web and analyze a food web. So also give the uses of decomposers in an ecosystem. So those are the things that I want you guys to be able to do after this module. So students, would you agree that all living things are connected with one another? You can use the example of a spider web. So if you look at the big spider web, you'll see that there's tiny little intricate details all forming together, forming that one spider web. And if we would take away one part of it, the whole spider web might fall or the spider might fall. And just like that, you are all connected within an ecosystem and all other living creatures and animals are also connected within an ecosystem. So all the parts of the web work together to support the spider. And if one of the woven threads are removed, then the spider will fall apart. In the same way, living organisms are dependent on other living organisms and the environment they live in creating an intricate woven system of interdependence. So, let's start with plants. Plants are really dependent on the environment to provide them with organic food. So, all animals are dependent on plants to provide them with food. And everything is connected with one another. So, we can say, if you take it closer, and look at the relationship that exists between the different organisms and the environment, that can be seen as an ecosystem. So students, let's talk about ecology and to a tiny bit of introduction to ecology. So ecology is the study of the interactions of organisms with one another and with the physical and chemical environment. So scientists usually classify the study of ecology as the interactions into four different levels. Populations, those are a group of organisms of the same species that live in the same area and are able to interbreed with each other and in their population. That's called a population. Communities, those are different species of organisms or different populations that share a common area and are interdependent on each other and they are referred to as a community. And then the third one, ecosystems. An ecosystem consists of a community and its environment. The living organisms after each other and their environment. The environment affects the living organisms. An ecosystem consists of living and non-living factors. And then you get the biosphere. All ecosystems combined to make up the biosphere. Bias meaning life. So the biosphere is where living things can survive. So if you look at this board over here, I'm going to quickly pop up a photo so you can have a look in, just an in-depth look at it. And then I'm going to explain to you the different levels. So the atmosphere is basically looking at from the soil all the way up until the night sky. Above the mountains, above everything else, that is your atmosphere. The hydrosphere is where you find water molecules, guys. So the ocean falls underneath the hydrosphere, the mountains, everything else falls underneath the hydrosphere. Then, below the surface, the soil surface, you get the lithosphere. 
That's where you get your soil, your continental crust, and even the ocean, the depth of the ocean falls underneath that, and even the oceanic crust. So that is all called the lithosphere. Then, three of them fall together underneath your biosphere, where living things occur. Just below the highest tops of the mountains, the mountains themselves, the trees, the soil, the ocean, up until you get the continental crust. That is known as the biosphere. That is where living organisms can access oxygen or light or whatever needs they have to survive. I hope that explains it a little bit more.